Hey, you're you. I'm Casual, and this is Guns Up Mobile. And today, we're going to talk about the big boys. Yeah? We're going to talk about Thunder Squad. No, not Thunder Squad. We're talking about Rocketeers. We're going to talk about Bombardiers. And we'll also talk about Javeliners at the end. Now, Grenadiers, I'm going to start them off real quick. They do belong as an honorable mention in this conversation because they kind of occupy the space. But as we're going to see very quickly... They're just not that great, and they lose out on stats to the other units pretty quickly. Now, here we have the big boys, Rocketeers, coming in at 3,500 hit points. Now, I've got double tap equipped on these guys. I have discount equipped on these guys, and I have right here this thing, <clears throat> tape magazine. As you can see right here, these guys have a very long reload time and they carry one magazine one uh, round in their magazine so the most important stat for them in terms of fire rate is going to be the reload time so you're going to want a tape magazine as opposed to a tune-up kit so let's keep that in mind their special ability is demolition it increases the damage they do to vehicles and structures so these guys these guys are your big hitters when it comes to destroying structures that's what you want them in your team for and i'm going to contrast that with bombardiers in a second but rocketeers are basically for clearing out the space they're not your killers they're not the guys that take out your enemy they can be and they do an okay job of it but really what they're there for is complete disruption and destruction of the environment so if you need to take out uh, any kind of structure your mortars you need to take out your AA guns, anything like that. You just aim them in the vicinity, give them double tap, and they will destroy it. Now let's take a look at that. They have no masteries as of this point, so uh, they kind of lose out to bombardiers and javeliners on that point. But, you know, when they do, hopefully soon, we'll, we'll see how that changes things. Now they have 3,500 hit points. They're costing me 170 energy with my squad bonus and my discount. Now, keep in mind, I have a full Thunder Squad, so I have all the Thunder Squad bonuses if your numbers are not quite lining up with mine. I spawn one unit at a time. They do twelve about 1,200 damage base. I do not have high caliber rounds equipped on these guys, so it's just 1,200. Their fire rate is point. Oh, uh, sorry, 0 0.74 rounds per second. That does factor in the, into their uh, fire rate. They carry one ammo in their magazine. Their reload time, now this is my reload time because I do have tape magazine is 1.87. Spawn cooldown is five, so they're, they're pretty quick on the respawn. They have an accuracy, base accuracy of 70. They're actually, despite... Everything it seems to indicate on screen, they're actually very, very accurate, uh, and they get more, they become more accurate with um, with skills. They have a range of twenty one, and they have minus twenty five ballistic resistance. They are the range of twenty one is actually relatively short, so you do want them to have some kind of resistance. And negative twenty five, believe it or not, is is the best out of all the other units in this category. They have an explosive resistance of 50, and unfortunately they have a minus 75 pierce resistance. So that's where they kind of fall flat. Let's take a look at their skills. Heavy impact increases the explosive radius, which is great because that's what you want. You just want them to do a lot, a lot, a lot of collateral damage. You have lock-on, which increases their accuracy when aiming at vehicles and structures. That means you've got 70% chance to hit uh, base and you have an extra 30% chance to hit if it's firing at a structure so if you want to be inaccurate pick a unit to shoot at if you want to be accurate pick a uh, structure to shoot at and they also reduce their aim time against vehicles and structures by about up to 50% so that means the way this works out effectively is if you have a high-level tape magazine and you have uh, 
a sergeant on your squad and you're firing at a building, they will reload and fire very, very quickly. And that's good because if you're using something like focus fire, focus fire has a finite time span. You can get a lot of shots out with the Rocketeer if you're doing that. And then you include double tap. So now you're not only firing faster, you're also firing potentially more rockets. So that's how you increase their damage. And their last skill is Bulldoze, and that simply just applies vulnerability to buildings, structures, and vehicles if they get hit by one of these RPGs, which means not only are they firing faster and they're more accurate, but once they hit once, they do more damage with everything going forward. So that's why I actually don't have high caliber rounds equipped on these guys. I think 1200 damage is plenty, especially with double tap because you can potentially overlap the radiuses on these things. Uh, and the things that they're firing at, they generally level pretty quickly. And they're competing against our friends, the Bombardiers over here. They also don't have masteries, so we'll see how that goes going forward. Take a look at their special ability. They fire thermite rounds. And that's different from rockets from the RPGs because the rockets from the RPGs do splash damage. And the thermite grenades from Bombardiers don't. They don't do splash damage. They're a single target single um, projectile only. So they will either hit their target or they will miss their target. If they do hit their target, they will set them on fire and there's more mechanics that go along with that. We'll go over that in a second. So I've got, excuse me, um, they have more hit points. They have 4,200 hit points. They are cheaper. Now they, are, they don't start off cheaper, but they do get cheaper. You spawn one and with high caliber rounds, uh, level 14 high caliber rounds, I'm doing 1,000 damage. I think baseline it's about 670 damage for these guys per round. So that's considered that's a little bit less than you get out of the RPG. But as you can see here, their fire rate is 2.8 per second. That's of course with the tune-up kit, but baseline it's about 1.8. Eight shots per second. So they do fire relatively quickly. They also have six rounds in their magazine, which means that they're not constantly reloading the way the RPG is. And uh, their reload time is 1.86, and that's baseline faster than the than the <clears throat> the Rocketeer without the uh, tape magazine. The respawn time is four seconds. But look at this, their accuracy is 25%. They are very, very inaccurate. I'm not saying you should put scopes on their guns. I'm just saying they are very inaccurate. You kind of need double tap. It really helps if you have a sergeant on your team. But basically, you, you, you need to fire a lot with these guys. And you need to generally use double tap because you want them to spread around and just have a better chance of hitting anything at all and if it's a uh, you know if you're firing at structures if you're firing at buildings it's it's not that big of a deal but if you're trying to hit uh, units it could be problematic to hit your target and eliminate it once they hit it it's, it's dead but before that it, it's a problem the range is 26 which is very long range i mean we're talking about almost sniper range so that's great. They have ballistic resistance of minus 100, which is, you know, it's fine considering that they're so far back, but it's not good. Explosive resistance of 50, which is the same as a Rocketeer. They have the bonus 50 resistance to poison, to toxic damage. Uh, this is good. It's better than, you know, Rocketeers do have a, a tendency to walk into uh walk into chem and flamer traps. Bombardiers generally don't because they have longer range, but if they do, they're, they are resistant to the toxic damage, so that's good. Uh, unfortunately, they have minus 100% pierce resistance. That means they take double damage from, from snipers. 
and that means their 4200 health doesn't really go as far as you think it does when you're facing those kind of enemies. Their skills, cheap labor, it reduces deploy cost by 30%. That means they start off at, I think it's about 250. And then if you include, or about 200. I don't, I actually don't remember how, how, what the cost is, but uh, the cost is reduced by cheap labor and it's also reduced by the squad bonus. So you can get these guys relatively cheap and that's what you, what you really want to do with them. You just want to get a whole mass of these guys with tune-up kits and just and double tap and just spam, 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 spam the screen, okay? Gun maintenance, you reduce their reload speed, which is fantastic, and extended magazine, extended barrel increases the range of their fire, which is also great. These guys are really snipers, albeit very inaccurate snipers. And then you have rays. The thermite grenades apply vulnerability status to units for the duration of the fire status. So once you start burning them for the duration of the burn, which is about two to three seconds, they're going to also be vulnerable, which is great because once they hit a target, not only is that target burning, but it's also taking more damage from every source of damage that's hitting it. So it's a great mechanic. Kind of like the RPG, but the RPG, the Rocketeer, uh, they're only applying that to buildings and vehicles, whereas the Bombardier applies that to everything. Now, Javeliners, I, I don't remember what the rest of their uh, masteries are. I think their last one just increases their range ridiculously against mortars. But we'll just go through and give you an understanding. Now, Strategic Strike means Javeliners ignore walls when aiming at buildings. I mean, walls do not reduce their or eliminate their line of sight for buildings that means if you if you are building a base and you're putting a mortar behind walls because you're thinking oh they're going to have to uh, take down the walls or they're going to have to use focus fire to hit this thing javeliners don't they can hit buildings behind walls making them very very dangerous and and what they really do is they allow the allow you, the, the, the person using them, to save your command abilities for other things. So you don't have to use focus fire to take out certain buildings. You can just kind of let the javeliners do it on their own, assuming they're not targeting something else. Their stats, 3,600 hit points. It's a little bit more than the Rocketeer. Uh, I've, got a, I've got them down to 178 energy cost that's because i have discount i really need these guys to be cheap they're very expensive they do let's actually just do it this way so they're 270 minus the discount they spawn one they're doing 2200 damage and i've got high caliber rounds so i'm doing well over 3000 they do a lot of damage their their fire rate is 0.78 uh 0.74 which is about the same as the Rocketeer. They have one round in their magazine, which means one of the most important stats for them is their reload speed. And their spawn cooldown is seven, which makes them the slowest spawn cooldown of the, the, the three units that we're talking about. They have a 100% accuracy, and they have very long range. of 22 range, and considering that they're, they don't have, they can break line of sight in order to fire, against buildings, they they don't have to do some of the things that the other guys ha have to do, which is they have to walk around walls if they want to target something. These guys just fire off at whatever is behind walls. It doesn't include sandbags, doesn't include units, but it does include buildings. And so they can kind of stay even safer with this 22 range. And if you have scouts on your team, they're, they're even deadlier from a longer range. Uh, Kind of like the Bombardiers and the Rocketeers, they're weak to ballistic and they're weak to pierce damage. And they're strong against explosives. So it's pretty good. Let's take a look at their skills. Quick launch reduces the amount of time that their missile takes to, to activate effectively once, once it's fired. 
And uh, that's very, very useful because not only do they take a very long time to aim and a very long time to reload and a very long time to fire, but then you also, as you're firing, it takes a while for the, the rocket to kind of activate and then actually complete its traje trajectory, which is very long. <clears throat> Improved optics increases the range, which is great because it's already long. You can make it even longer. And salvage, destroying a structure grants energy. It's fantastic because you're, they're going to be the ones destroying most of your <clears throat> uh, most of your enemies' structures. So, cool. They're not that great against, you know, like, they're not that great on, on defense because you can't just put them behind a wall and expect them to fire. They're not that great at something like zombie mode because they're just they're just not very good at it honestly they, their splash radius is very small unlike the rocketeer which has a very large splash radius so they're not that great against doing a lot a lot a lot of collateral damage also the rocketeer being relatively inaccurate means that their 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 rounds fly everywhere and even if you aim relatively precisely with focus fire you're going to just ruin a huge chunk of space with all those inaccurate rockets whereas the javeliner is incredibly accurate and that means you're going to hit exactly what you want to hit at the detriment of not hitting anything else so if you have a whole bunch of uh, javeliners on your team and you use focus fire thinking you're going to destroy a whole bunch of stuff in an area because you do a lot of damage be very careful what you focus fire on because it will just destroy that thing just that thing maybe like one or two units around it but mostly just that one space whereas the rocketeers you get a whole bunch of them you tell them to fire they will they will just level everything in its path so that's what they're really good at best thing we could probably do right now is just to hop into a game and i'm going to take bombardiers and rocketeers into this one just for sake so i'll just take vampires <clears throat> i don't think i need just to make this easier, why not? Now, we're going to... Normally I would take... Uh, I, I would take scouts with me, but no scouts on this one. Let's take a look at what our enemies' units are now. Yeah, they're definitely protecting this, so we're just going to clear it out. And we'll get our Rocketeers and our Bombardiers going. We got uh, our Sergeant in the back. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. You're going to see that our Rocketeers fire relatively quickly because I have a Sergeant and they're making them reload faster. You're going to see the Bombardiers firing now, Bombardiers can't really do much, but they make a really, really good combo with the Rocketeer, especially if you're facing uh, if you're facing Bounty Hunter spam. Because the Bounty Hunters, they're going, they're weak to, they're, they're weak to fire damage, but <clears throat> again, don't forget, Bombardiers are very inaccurate, so they're going to miss most of the time. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it, it's definitely, you have the, the Bombardiers really provide great uh, support for the Rocketeers. The Rocketeers will will do the first wave of damage. They'll soften up the space, and then the Bombardiers will come in and clean it up with their, with their spam. How are they doing? You can see here my Trailblazers are taking the, the brunt of the damage, but the Rocketeers here, they're in the front. And they are getting, <clears throat> and they are getting burned by the chems and the flamers, whereas the bombardiers are kind of hanging out in the back, and they're they're having a good time back there, and they're just firing away as fast as they possibly can. What's going on here? All right, got my zombies. They're fighting the zombies. One good thing about that bombardiers on offense is if you're you're going up against a team of zombies. If you if a team of um, mad scientists, they'll spawn the zombies within your your front line, 
<clears throat> and then your rocketeers will uh, rocket the zombies. And that's very unfortunate because those zombies are in the middle of your front line and they're going to just level everything, which is, which is bad. So bombardiers in that instance are a better pick because they don't do a lot of collateral damage. They're, you're, they're much better off in terms of just letting your guys do what they have to do. And you can also see here the bombardiers are alive, most of them, whereas the rocketeers, I'm down to two. And I've lost quite a few. I've lost my sergeant. I don't really care. <clears throat> but you can just see that the in this particular instance, the bombardiers are much more resilient as to how uh, how they how this this scenario get, gets played out. On the other hand, they're firing off at these bounty hunters, and they're not really making much of a dent against them. What really helps is you have these rocketeers that are killing them, essentially. They're proccing their fourth skill, and then the, the bombardiers can kind of come in and clean up. Of course, the, the trailblazers can, can do exactly the same thing, so... There isn't really much that the bombardiers are lending to the situation other than a whole bunch of really fast, really fast high damage output. But if I just have a whole bunch of uh, rocketeers here, and because they're they actually have a relatively short respawn time, I get a bunch of these guys in there. Let's just do focus fire. Very pretty. My goodness, that a sergeant. This is a this is a sorry sight. That a sergeant, <clears throat> because they are inaccurate. And uh, where are they? I'm not actually interested in finishing this battle. Just in case you're curious. I'm, I'm much more interested in, in showing off, so here we go. <laughs> That's fun. So now let's just take that back. We'll take a look at Javeliners instead, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can <clears throat> change the way that I spawn the units a little bit, because I did start off with the sergeants, and the one thing the sergeants do is they make the rocketeers and the bombardiers more accurate, and they also, <clears throat> excuse me, and they also reduce their reload speed. So you didn't really get to see their reload, their slow reload speed, until much later into the battle. <clears throat> and I've run out of water, so I'm going to be a little gravelly. Excuse me. So what we did before is we we started off and we said okay. Uh, how do I do this? And unfortunately, we did, the last opponent didn't have a didn't have a pew. But you're going to see here actually the difference between javeliners and rocketeers. Which is a rocketeer, they they fire slowly, right? They they don't shoot out a lot of bullets. So if you have an opponent that's got a pew. There we go. There's that mortar. Now, I wasn't even worried about the mortar. I didn't even give it a second thought. And there we go. The chem got destroyed. Really, my biggest worry right now is these <clears throat> are these uh, snipers, these sharpshooters, because uh, they're very, very annoying. I have every single unit that I have right now is, <laughs> is weak to... Oh my goodness. Every unit I have right now is, is weak to this to this stuff, so let me just clean that up a little bit and see what I can do. Now the, the bombardiers are good against uh maybe that's just a bad pick. <laughs> the bombardiers are actually pretty good against these pews. Uh they uh fire a lot. Right? So you have uh, 
you can overwhelm the pew. Whereas uh, what's going to happen right now is you're going to see these javeliners, they're going to fire over the pew. And they're going to take it out. So I don't have to worry about the pew all that much. Obviously, I still have to worry about it. But let me, let me show you what happens with the javeliners when you pick a, a focus fire target that's a that's a building they're just going to shoot that one building and that's pretty much it there isn't a lot that they're going to do so thank goodness i have all of these all these bombardiers here that can just completely wipe out whatever opposition i'm facing i don't have to worry about that now let's just clean off what we can I don't want to have to deal with this. It's just because I'm using trailblazers right now against these snipers. They're, I just I don't want to have to deal with anything else, honestly, because I'm already dealing with enough. If I was using against this particular base, if I was using uh, bounty hunters, I wouldn't be having such a big problem in terms of clearing out these buildings. But you can see here, I'm not focusing on the buildings that much. I'm mostly focusing on just spawning my units and letting the javeliners take care of whatever it is that they need to take care of. Now that we're past the first set of obstacles, this is pretty much clear sailing. And I have a whole bunch of stuff. I have a whole bunch of everything, really. You can just let them do their thing. Look at that. Look at me. I have four rockets right now saved up that I haven't done anything with. Yeah, these <laughs> these uh, sharpshooters are quite a pain for my team because every single unit here is weak to piercing. But you know we're able to overwhelm it eventually, and we're able to take out all the buildings because the javeliners they're very good. At what they do they're very good at clearing out specific individual targets and they're very good at clearing out things like mortars aa guns uh, cannons defensive positions that are they're hidden behind walled obstacles and if your opponent has units that are hidden behind the natural rock walls like let's say these guys right here not very well hidden these guys right here what you could do is with your your javeliners, you could, you know, from like this position, you could focus fire into here, and they will focus fire uh, over over these natural obstacles. So that's very very useful. And again, it is useful to uh, I don't want to go up against this. This is fine. It is useful to, yeah, this is fine, to bring both. It is very, very useful to bring both because they're not exactly the same unit. They don't do the same things. They don't fill the same roles. They don't do damage in the same way. The, you, you could see the bombardiers, they were they were just complete spamming your, your opponents. And they could overwhelm most defenses just by the weight of their, their speed and the amount of spam that they could output because... But you could also see that without any accuracy, they just weren't hitting their targets and... Uh, Units like bounty hunters, while they are weak to fire, if you don't hit them, you're not going to kill them, especially with their, their invulnerability frames, whereas the rocketeers, they're just going to hit. They're going to hit everything, uh, whether pretty much they're aiming at it or not, just by virtue of how they, how they function. And then you have the javeliners who, you know, normally I would be concerned about Things like this mortar but now I have javeliners I didn't even blink I didn't even think about it being there I just let them take it out but what if I want to you say 
Well, okay, let's just focus fire on this, this tent over here. Let's see what happens. And you have, you know, you have the Rocketeers that just took out, you know, most of everything in the way because, because they're not accurate. And I have these sergeants here really for the reload speed increase. 